Hello, baseball fans, and welcome. The show brings you a matchup of division rivals. It's the Washington Nationals going up against the New York Mets. Alongside Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby, and we got a rubber match on our hands today, partner. Yeah, the final game of a three-game set. They've split the first two, and regardless of how important a series is within the larger picture of the season, it's a game you want to get up for. Every series win feels good, so we should see a fun matchup in this one. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Just about to get started, and starting in this one, Max Scherzer. And as usual with him singing, I think we can expect plenty of strikeouts. Yeah, Boogie's racked up over 3,000 strikeouts in his career, so expect to see more of the same in this one. So just about set now. Up now for Washington, Luis Garcia. The next pitch misses, and it's two and one. Scherzer winds, kicks, fires. I mean, that's perfect location right on the black. I mean, over and over again, this guy demonstrates the ability to hit those spots. They're so tough to do anything with as a hitter. That hits the dirt, and the count's full. Scherzer deals. The punch out there, now one away. Oh, this guy's been pretty much a non-factor so far this weekend. Very little in the way of impactful at-bats and quality at-bats and let alone contact. That's the sixth time they've set him down on strikes in the series. So no doubt frustration mounting and very high right now. Alcides Escobar digging in for the Nationals. Line drive. And it goes just foul. Scherzer ahead one and two. I got to count two and two. No score, just getting started. Top of the first. Swing and a pop off in foul ground. Piazza makes the catch. Two down. Batting third. As we the take right a look here. at the Nationals lineup. And an important bat for them, batting fifth in this one. Josh Bell. Well, right in the middle of this lineup, and that's exactly where he belongs. I mean, he's there for a reason, Boog. This guy, they know they can rely on him, and he's a force, a presence there that, you know, puts a little trepidation in that opposing pitcher. We'll see what kind of impact he has in this one. Next well, pitch misses great. outside, and the count is even two and two. So here's Scherzer. Bounce to third. Fires over to Hernandez. And Vladdy is set down. Nats go down one, two, three. Three up, three down for Washington. Now the Mets offense will go to work for the first time. No score. Baseball on the show. Bottom of the first. Today's starting pitcher, Patrick Corbin. He's had his ups and downs in his career as his ERA is just over four, but this is a guy that's not afraid. He's going to take the ball. He's going to go out there and give it his best. We go to the bottom of the first. Now it's the second baseman, Luis Guillorme. Next pitch off the play and a count two and one.
Left hand batter waits. Flips the corner. And now two and two. Is there a little wrinkle to that? I think there was. Yeah. A little slider action. Bounced out to short. One gone, bottom half of the first. Let's take a peek at the Mets lineup here. And a big part of it, a guy with a great track record, Mike Piazza. Well, he's just been a consistent and dominant power threat throughout his career. I mean, over 400 career home runs. I mean, that just doesn't happen to an average power hitter. This guy's been elite, and we'll see as he continues uh, if he's going to make it into Cooperstown, into the Hall of Fame. Next pitch has popped up. Now the throw to first on the run. Two up, two down. That is good. The catcher, Mike Piazza. So up next for New York, Mike Piazza. He might just be the best hitting catcher in the game today. Well, Boog, he's so valuable, does a good job behind the plate, but offensively, he's a middle-of-the-order type of bat, especially when you talk about catchers, and their number one job is to handle the pitching staff and prevent runs. This guy is able to add runs by producing it. Next pitch, not close, up high. Two down, nobody on. Stays alive. Next pitch downstairs, and the count's full. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Eighth pitch of the at back coming up. In the air to left center, Escobar sizes this one up, puts the squeeze on that one, and that'll end the inning. And the Mets go down one, two, three. We played an inning, no score. And welcome back. Second inning set to go. Here's Juan Soto. Possibly thinking about home run number 100 here. He's just one shy of that milestone. Well, Juan Soto had a huge 2021 season, just one point shy of 1,000 for OPS. Absolutely a monster at the plate. This guy's pretty special. Two and one now, Scherzer deals. That one fouled off, two and two. Right-hander kicks, deals. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Righty delivers. 3-2 now. I think the thing you start with for Soto is that patience and that strike zone understanding. A lifetime on base percentage well over 400 in the second half of 2021 he had an OBP over 500 the kick the 3-2 swag and a miss the velocity blasted it right past him thought it was a pretty good pitch top of the strike zone we're seeing more fastballs in that location hitters especially with two strikes have to be ready to pull the trigger Josh Bell at the plate now. He burst onto the scene at 19 years old and looked several years older in terms of his maturity, his plate discipline, and how he handled pressure moments. Second inning here, no score. Next pitch inside. Three balls and a strike. Daryl Parker assigned to umpiring duty behind home plate. And Boog with DP, it's sort of a coin flip on those borderline corner pitches. Doesn't really favor one side of the plate more than the other. Sometimes you get a little extra of the plate, and sometimes you won't. It does seem like he evens it out over the course of a game, though. 
Maybe a little loss of focus on the mound right there. Pretty much gifted him first base with a quick free pass. And it's the catcher for the Nationals, Gary Carter. Next offering is downstairs. The pitch. And now it's filled up. The pitch. Had a swing and a line drive at a right field. That's a hit. They get it in quickly. So first and second, now one out. Well, that may end up being an at-bat. We go back to later on when this game is over. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Now a huge at-bat in this game coming up. At the play, Yadiel Hernandez. On the ground, two ball. Lindor, that's one, and that's two. Well, the second baseman made that one look easy. Great feed to the shortstop. Shortstop completes the play. They get out of a jam, and they end the inning. Back here at the ballpark, here's Pete Alonso. Here's a 1-1. In the air, right field. Guerrero in position. Pulls it in, and there's one away. Batting fifth, the third baseman, Eduardo. Eduardo Escobar, El Caballo up to it. And down on strikes he goes, and two away now. So I'd say that was a pretty generous call right there. And when a pitcher's getting that call, that there's really not much you can do about it as a hitter. And you know what? Guys today are so disciplined to stay with their approach and game plan. Not surprised at all that he took that pitch. Now it's Dominic Smith. And a weak ground ball to the left side. Sends it across to first, third out. Down in order, go the Mets. We'll move to the third with no score. Well, here we go. Top of the third scoreless game. And now up for Washington, Nelson Cruz. The wind of the pitch. That one missing inside. He needs a quick one, two, three this time around. Last inning through a lot of pitches. And a pitch. That's a strike. And a two, two. And now it's filled up. Wind in the pitch. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. What a battle. It's not always easy laying off a 3-2 pitch. And I tell you what, he earned that walk. So up next, Michael Franco. And the pitch. And that one fouled off. The 
the 1-2. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. And there's one away. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. I mean, with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate, so very difficult to get the barrel on it. And a one-two. In the air on the infield, Escobar right there to make the grab. And there are two down. The batter, number three, shortstop, Alcides Escobar. Alcides Escobar will hit next. First time up was a pop-out. The pitch. On the ground right side, Hernandez takes it to the bag, and the inning is over. So one left for Washington. Still no score. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Here's Brandon Nimmo. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Line to left. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one away. Batting eight. No left fielder. Mark. Here's Mark Canna. Well, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. Guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. Out to short. It's in and out of his glove, but plenty of time to recover, and that's the second out. Batting none. Not shortstop. Francisco. And now it's Frankie Lindor. He's got pop, which is a little sneaky because he's so comfortable with taking his base hits to the opposite field. But he can jump you if you make a mistake. And there's yeah. ball four. One of the things about that two-out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or an end of the gap will produce a two-out RBI, and those are the best. That is, if you are the offensive side of it. Corbin over to first. No, Lindor back in standing. Oh, and now a wild pitch. In there safely. And now the lefty. That one ripped. Lays out and makes the play. One of the most fun and exciting things you can do as an outfielder. You lay out, you make a diving catch, and you end the inning. That gets the boys fired up in the dugout. Welcome back. John Chomby with Chris Singleton. And set to lead off the fourth, Vladimir Guerrero. Rolled over to third, and that one finds its way through. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Now Dominant now performance for him today, Boo. Just two hits allowed so far, no runs across either, and he's had an answer for just about every hitter he's faced. So I don't think this hit is going to knock him off his stride too much. Go ahead, run on base. 
Juan Soto digging in for the Nationals. Runner takes go. off. Yeah. Strike in there. Tag. Out. Oh. Piazza with a great throw. Well, I really didn't expect him to try to steal second base because he had a very standard lead at best. If you're going to try to get there safely, you've got to get more on that lead. You've got to get a better jump. That was the difference between being safe and out. Next pitch misses. Yeah, that's ball two. Two and two. One down, base is empty. And look out as that one ran in and got him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Well, the one positive, if you're out there on the mound, it's knowing that you can still get out of this inning with one pitch. You can't let that mistake snowball here. Get that ground ball. Get out of the inning with a double play. Kicks and fires. And it's even up. The pitch. Good eye right there. With two strikes. May see some movement over there at first base. Try to stay out of a double play here. Kicks and deals. Bell puts it in the air out towards left center. He's got it. Two away. The catcher, number eight, Gary Carter. And now the catcher comes up to him. Gary Carter, single to right in his first trip. This is a guy who is very highly regarded defensively. Fun to watch him control stuff behind the plate. Good game caller, good at framing, but it's that big arm that really stands out. And he deals. And now the count, one and two after the swing and the miss. When you got a catcher like this guy with a big arm like that behind the plate, it really shuts down the running game. On the ground, right side. To second, there's Lindor. And that is that. On now to the bottom of the fourth. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. And welcome back. Ready to go. Bottom four. And now the first baseman, Keith Hernandez. The MO for him is contact. A guy who's going to deliver average, not a ton of power. He's looking to hit a line drive somewhere. Y'all, that's why it's a team. And when you look at a lineup, he's a great two-hole hitter or a guy that you could put at the bottom to help turn that lineup over to have some momentum for your top hitters coming up to the plate. And one gone in the fourth as they get the leadoff man. Good late bite on that slider. Got the hitter out in front, rolled over on it. Exactly what he was supposed to do. Here's the power hitting catcher, Mike Piazza. 0 for 1 with a fly out. This guy makes great contact. One of the best in the game at putting bat on ball. He's got such quick hands, and he's gaining pitch recognition. That keeps him square to the plate. There's a good chance that his bat stays in the zone a long time, and that produces solid contact consistently. Well, he earned his trip to first right there. It's not easy laying off pitches that just miss the zone like that. And it's a real discipline as well. He's put a lot of work into that aspect of his game, and it paid off right there. The one-two. Swing and a ball popped up. Garcia makes the play. Two down. Now batting. Third baseman. Eduardo. Escobar. And now it's switch hitting third baseman Eduardo Escobar. And here it comes. On the ground. And it's through for a hit. Throw stops the lead runner at second. Two on and two out. Just kept it simple. Played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from. And there's just no one there to knock it down. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Dom Smith stands in. Two on, two outs. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see a visit from the pitching coach here. Just to remind him, focus on the hitter. Don't worry about anything else. The pitch. 
Well, these guys have had a hard time scoring in this one. The guy out there on the mound wants to keep attacking, make sure that they don't get any confidence. The 3-1. They say it went. Piazza over at second. Escobar on at first with two down. Line drive. That's a base hit. Hernandez fires it to the plate. Slides his hand in there. Save. And it's 1 0. Couple of hits in a row for him here. Nice job going the opposite way with it. Letting the ball travel and not allowing the barrel to hook around the ball. It's so frustrating when you see a good pitch and your hands roll over. It was on the outside part of the plate and he approached it perfectly. So two down. Now here is Brandon Nimmo. Next pitch is downstairs. The 2 1. On a line, base hit. Right past his coach, headed for the plate. The throw is offline, and he's in to score. It's 2 0. That's now three hits in a row for the offense. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. So two down now, and here is Mark Canna. Three two now. In the air out to center. Makes the grab, and that's the inning. On to the top of the fifth we go. It's the Mets two and the Nationals nothing. New inning getting started. Here's the left fielder, Yadiel Hernandez. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. And a swing and a miss. One away here in the fifth. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically likes to shoot the ball the other way. The but Nashville. that time, a little anxious. Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz digs in now. Two for seven in the series so far. Bounced up the middle. Sneaks through. Base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Pitch was on the outside. Didn't go the other way with it, but still a nice job of using the big part of the field to find a hole. No way he hits it that well if he hooks around the baseball there. Next to hit for the Nats, Michael Franco. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. Next offering finds the zone of the count is full. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. The 3 2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Got a great back and forth, and that at bat. He had to lay off some really close pitches, and somehow, Boogie found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. And a pitch. Swing and a chopper. Scherzer tossed the second over the first. That's two. Nicely done. One, six, three, and that will end the inning. Home half of the fifth coming up. It's the Mets two and the Nationals nothing.
back here at the ballpark, bottom of the inning. Here's Francisco Lindor. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. Yeah, we go beyond just the you know fielding percentage and you know what it looks like, but the ability to have a range and you know close holes that you know are normally there against an average defender. But this guy is special, and you can see it in his first step quickness. Number 13, second baseman, Luis. Back to the top of the Mets order. And next for the Mets, Luis Guillorme. Boog, and the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump. And defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle, you can lose your mechanics. But the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way. And this is what this guy does. The first baseman, number 17, Keith Hernandez. Two outs, base is empty. Now the number two hitter, Keith Hernandez. Two for ten in the series. Two-two now. Up the middle. And that one finds its way through. And that keeps the inning going. You can't do much better than that on a pitch that far outside of the strike zone. Got him to chase on the two-strike count, but he wasn't fooled. He hit that ball really well. And now Mike Piazza. He's 0 for 1. And the pitch. Swing and a line drive. Base hit out of the center field. So that's two straight, two out hits. Back to back base hits. That's about now as textbook as it gets. Got his stride and load Please. out of the way early. He oh, stayed inside God. that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. First and second, two down. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonzo. Yeah, the 2 1 hammered, but foul. pitch stays alive Hernandez at second Piazza at first two out of the inning swing and a bouncer on to first and that ends the inning two left for the Mets but they're on top 2 nothing. Welcome back. All set for the top of the sixth. Up now for Washington, Alcides Escobar. Next offering misses. Two and one. And yeah, the right hander deals. And yeah, there's a ball. Now in this three ball count, down in the ball game, you've got to be very selective. Take your walk if they'll give it to you. Swing and a miss. Three and two now. They haven't scored yet in this game. And with that swing, they're definitely trying to get on the board. That's the way guys go about their business today. The wind of the pitch. And he grounds one to the right side. 
Guillaume to first. And that's one out as they get the leadoff hitter in the sixth. Deceptive slider right there. Stayed in the tunnel a long time. Got that hitter out front. Rolled over it. Put it on the ground. And now up for Washington. Vladimir Guerrero. One for two. Righty delivers. So a foul ball makes it one and two. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. Two two now. Now a screamer into the outfield. Canna makes the play. That's out number two. Now batting, designated hitter, Juan Soto. Two outs, base is empty. Juan Soto now. The 2 1. Little chopper rolls foul. Here's a 2 2. Swing and a miss. That one in the dirt. In time, the 2 3 strikeout ends the inning. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and mess, and you walk off the field. Well, we go bottom six, down to third baseman, Eduardo Escobar. The 1-1. One, one. And that one fouled off. Next offering is down low. Activity in the Washington bullpen. Tanner Rainey preparing to come on if needed. That to right. Guerrero makes the catch. One up, one down. The center fielder, number two, Dominic. And now the center fielder, Dominic Smith. And he's already singled in this game. One, two now. Hard hit, right side. Whips it to first. Two up, two down. Now that right field, Brandon Nimmo. So digging in, Brandon Nimmo. This one high in the air to left center. That's down. One hops off the wall. And into second easily with a two-out double. Love how he let that ball travel, trusted his hands. Nice job of going the other way. Here comes the manager out of the dugout, and he'll make a move for the bullpen. Patrick Corbin departs. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound. New arm out of the bullpen, Sam Clay. And he'll do his best to keep this close. Well, at this point of the ball game, we're talking about middle innings and a little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. And stepping in for New York, Mark Canna. The next offering misses, and it's three and two. Two outs and one in scoring position. And it's ball four. He missed down low. Francisco Lindor up now for the Mets. A switch hitter batting right. 
and a 1-1. Hey. That one in there across the letters. Now oh, just a cement mixer slider right there. It's a great pitch to hit if you can recognize it early and jump on it. Nope, Next offering is down low. Two and two. two Nimmo, the lead runner at second. Canna on at first with two down. Next pitch has popped up. Pulls it in on the run. And the inning is over. Two left for the Mets as they're unable to add to their 2-0 lead. And welcome back. Here's Josh Bell. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. Bullpen activity starting up now. John Franco getting ready to go. Adovino warming up as well. The 3-1. Ground ball up the middle. Guillaume collects. And the leadoff hitter set down to open the seventh. First of all, that's just a nice job to even get to that ball. And then even more impressive was the throw. Off balance. Had to try to end the air, get his shoulders turned, and make a strong throw. Does show off the strength of the arm. We're usually used to seeing that kind of arm strength from the shortstop. Here's a 1-1. And delivers outside. Yeah, there's the strike. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Yeah, the righty deals. Line drive, that's a base hit out of the left center field. Around first and hustling for second. The throw is wild and it gets away. Safe. He beats it. Clearly that was a solid double all the way. Nice swing of the bat right there. But that just can't happen on defense. Getting the ball back into the infield. You've got to make a decent throw your infielders can handle. Just gave him an extra 90 feet for free. One down. Runner at third. Yadiel Hernandez digging in for the Nationals. Tying run at the plate. And a swing and a miss. Now a high fly ball out to left center. Smith on the move to his right. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. Runner tags for home. He's in on the sack fly, and it's a one-run game. There you go. Nice little RBI there. It's a great at bat. Got the job done. Here's the center fielder, Nelson Cruz. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a miss, and that is that. Seventh inning stretch time. It's the Mets two and the Nats one. A new pitcher in the game, Tanner Rainey. And his job is to collect quick outs and keep his team within striking distance. Back here at the ballpark, set for the last half of the seventh. And now, Luis Guillorme. The 1-1. One, one. Puts it in the air out towards left center. And there's one down. Now 
now batting. The first baseman, Keith. Hernandez. So up next, Keith Hernandez. Righty to the plate. And now the count is even. Left hand hitter waits. Swing and a pop off in foul ground. He makes the grab, and there's two away. That was a good, hard fastball with some nice ride up in the zone right there. Hitter looked like he was on it, but I think that velocity at the end just beat him. Instead of a line drive or something hit deep, it's a pop-up and an easy out for the defense. Here's the catcher, Mike Piazza. Next offering is foul back. Right-handed reliever. That one drilled left field. Way back there. Turning, looking, and that one is gone. A solo shot, and they add a run. It's 3-1. Well, I'm sure there's a big grin on his face right now, Boog. He's probably had some of those that didn't stay fair, but off the bat, it looked like he was going to bend foul, was able to keep it in there, tucked it nicely, and he gets the jog around the bases. Good for him. And now, Pete Alonzo, and he walked him. Perfect. Now batting. Runner at first with two away. So up next for New York, Eduardo Escobar. One for three. Here's a 2-1. Now he can't squeeze it behind the plate. The tag, and that's out number three, inning over. But add on one more as the solo shot stretches their lead even further. And this is now a 3-1 ball game. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. John Franco, and he'll do his best to hang on to this lead. We're at the top of the eighth. Up now for Washington, Michael Franco. Well, they've kept him pretty quiet in this series. Still doesn't have a knock. I know you want to get that first knock out of the way. Maybe more will come. But you got to give some credit to the pitching staff. They've had a great plan against him. Off-balance throw in time. And that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. And now it's Luis Garcia. Two one pitches in there, and the count is even. It's been tough for the offense so far, but you can't get frustrated. You got to find a way to shake it off. Go up there and relax. That's the only way you're going to be able to put runs up on the board. The other way, and that's a base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one out single. Take notes on that swing, kids. That was a really nice breaking ball on the low outside corner, and he did all you can do with that pitch. He dropped the barrel down to it, stayed inside it with his hands, and just slapped it hard the opposite way. Runner on at first with one gone. Next to hit for the Nats, Alcides Escobar. Got him, and there's two away. And now the right fielder, Vladimir Guerrero. 
Vladimir Garcia off of first with two away. Foul ball there. And a pitch. And that one hammered way back there. Turning and looking, and it's gone. That one felt good. His first homer of the year, it's 3-3. He's so good at getting his arms extended, and, and that's exactly what he did right there. You don't typically want to pull a pitch in that part of the plate, but he doesn't allow his wrist to roll over, stays through the ball, gets the loft, and gets the home run. And now it's Juan Soto. Two down, nobody on. And a swing and a miss. The hat trick. And that is that. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. We're tied now with three apiece. Kyle Finnegan on the pitch out of the pen here. Uh, this guy can bring it velocity wise. Number 67, Kyle Finnegan. Bottom of the eighth, and stepping in for New York, Eduardo Escobar. The pitch swings through that, and it's a strikeout. And one out now. So the bullpen doing a nice job backing up the effort from their starter. Now yeah, we've seen some pretty excellent fielder. pitching out of this staff so far. I mean, they've come in ready to do their job and get outs. They've been pretty tough to get to in this one. Dominic Smith now at the plate. To third. Dives and he can't hang on. And he beats it. That's a hit. Great try there. Pitch hitter coming on. Jeff McNeil. And this is a big at bat in this ball game. So a change being made at first base. Pinch running here. Starling Marte. One away. Tie game. Go ahead run. Stands at first. Marte on the move. Out there to center. Cruz try to get to it. Squeezes it. And there are two outs. Up next to the Mets. No left fielder. Mark. Mark Canna up now for the Fair Mets. Enough. Finnegan picks the first. Marte dives back in. Two gone. The possible go-ahead run at first. Another throw. Really keeping him close. Next pitch is inside. Two and two. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. Move first. Hammer put the extra bases. And that gets all the way to the wall. Coming home. 
He will score, and they take the lead. It's 4-3. to three. Mission accomplished there as he picks up the RBI to give him the lead. When you see a ball come off the bat like that, you know it was pretty much a perfect swing. And for me, you know, I start wondering, and I'm looking on the computer, what was the exit velocity? This time, 106. And in scoring position with two away. Francisco Lindor up now for the Mets. Here's a 1-1. One -one. Pulls that one foul. Runner at second, two down. Next offering is downstairs. Smash to the left side. Sneaks through, base hit. Here's the throw to the plate. But it's offline. He will score. And they lead by two. Two consecutive base hits for these guys here. The pitch was dotted down and away. Good location, but a great job at the plate to squirrel it and drive it the other way. Beautiful swing. Here's Luis Guillorme. Good contact guy, good defender. Left-hand batter waits. And one and two. Right-hander kicks deals. Just a slow ground ball this time. Fires over to first. Play made, that ends the inning. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Mets five and the Nationals three. Staying in the game on defense, Jeff McNeil. He'll be the new right fielder after entering as a pinch hitter. Also into the ball game, Starling Marte. He'll be patrolling center field. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen, and he'll work on holding this lead. Number 39, Edwin Diaz. All set for the start of the inning. And now up for Washington, Josh Bell. Oh, that got away from him. And he's going to reach on a hit-by-pitch to lead off the inning. And it's the catcher for the Nationals, Gary Carter. A guy who makes an impact not just at the plate, but also in the field. Rip to first, caught, hits it to the bag himself, but he's back in time. Yadiel Hernandez digging in for the Nationals. The pitch. So now one and two. Just amazing to me how many closers and back-end relievers just throw absolute gas these days. I never would have had a chance. Next one misses. Two balls, two strikes. That's a really good take right there. Slider down and in. Very difficult to get on the same plane and do anything with. Hard ground ball base knock. Quick throw back in. Lead runner holds it second with one gone. Just a clutch at bat right there. Big time swing when this team really needed it. He wasn't able to elevate it, but he put a great swing on it. Right on time, good balanced approach, and just blasted it through the infield. Now here is Nelson Cruz. Got him! Now two away. Not the best location with the fastball on strike three, but when you're pumping high 90s, you'll get away with some of those. More margin for error. You know, the fastball has become such a huge strikeout pitch in the sport. And I think a lot of it has to do with all the attention and emphasis on improved spin rates. These fastballs are just exploding out of the pitcher's hands and jumping through the zone. Now, Michael Franco. Going to count one and two. And that 
that's the ball game. Well, these guys just want to keep it rolling right now. You win this series, you got another team coming in, and you want to do exactly the same. Maybe even push a little further, get yourself a sweep. You know the fans are going to be behind this club. They've been playing really well, and these guys, you can tell they feel the energy these fans bring to the ballpark. A 5-3 final score in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chambi. Talk to you soon. For the Nationals, three runs on seven hits, no errors. They left eight men on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and five minutes. Thank you for joining us here this afternoon. And we remind you to please drive home safely. Yeah. <laughs>